fucking WordPress admin, what I want to do, because looking at the videos back, I saw a couple of errors. So I just want to go to all pages, um, terms of service, edit with Elementor. If I look at the live version, I noticed I need to pull this up. And I also noticed this image, I haven't set it correctly like we did on all the other pages. Go to privacy policy. That's good, but it's set like this. I haven't done it correctly. So I'm just going to go back into, it's just housekeeping again. It's getting it all. I don't want to build a website and then have to come back at the end and have lots of errors. Obviously that's not one word, put that there. Okay, so I'm going to update that. And then I'm going to go to this image, style at the top. Yeah, I didn't do it, did I? Was it top center and cover? That's correct, update. You know, always go back if you see these little errors. Let's refresh that now. You don't want to have to, uh, you don't want to put it out there half baked with loads of mistakes on it. No, that looks great now. See, I've got to take that off as well. <laughs> put a Muppet. Let me just go back in. Delete. Little things that you miss. And I think I'm going to put in the industry. Update. While I'm doing that, I might as well just check. Right, okay. So I know that page is finished. Privacy policy, let's take a look. Yeah, I've got to take it out of there. You might have already altered these if you noticed, but um, it's just hard when I'm recording at the same time. Edit with Elementor. So I'm just going to go through these, make sure I've taken this out and I've added the industry. You can change that, you can put in whatever your niche is. We provide the best service in the roofing industry, plumbing industry, whatever, change it if you want. Um, but I like that. Update that. So if you go through yours and just double check at the bottom, we've taken them out. Right, okay, so been over the website now. Checked everything. I also added the information for the about page. You've probably already done yours. So I'm going to have to take that line out, didn't I, on that, I didn't do that. Okay, if I refresh this page, now you'll be able to see I have done it. Yeah. I'll put the guy's name in after whoever buys the site, and I'll put these bullet points in. And I've altered everything else, so that looks good. There was nothing on the home page. The about page I've finished. Portfolio page is finished. Yeah. I'm gonna do the FAQ contact us. I put in a little bit of information there. Obviously I'm gonna put the guy's phone number in. But I'm happy with that. I don't like a lot of information on it. I might change it, add a bit more text. Uh, move things up a little bit, but I quite like that. I don't get too hung up on it. I just want it to rank. I made all my alterations on here and the bottom. Privacy policy, I did the same. Everything looks good and finished. Right, really happy with that. Just housekeeping again, guys.
it's just got to be done if you are still wondering where I'm getting my information from or where I'm picking and choosing as you can see I click I don't go on page one I'll put the search term in and I'll go out to page four five six seven see what others have written click on nurse and have a look this is where I get my content from because we aren't going to know everything about every niche so that is that um, okay so in the next one we will do the FAQ page okay guys see you in the next video okay let's do the FAQ page the FAQ page don't forget it's for voice search I've got a few slides here where you'll be able to see why we're doing it by 2020 50% of searches online are predicted to be voice search. That's what this FAQ page is all about. Um, more statistics, you know, 33 million devices in circulation. That's all, that's right now. And the trend is only gonna get more. Uh, statistics, 52% of people have voice activated speakers in the living room. I didn't know about that, but there you go. 46% of voice search users look for local businesses. Restaurants near me, beauty salons near me, I always put that in and then I answer it. There will be 1 billion voice searches made by 2018. You know, it's just incredible. And that's what we're doing. We're building websites for the future here. Here's one, to be honest, 37% of over 55s have used voice search for local businesses. So that's a bit of a surprise for me. I think it, I thought it'd be the younger, younger generation. Local businesses are the ones who profit the most. And here's one that I just had to laugh at. What is your website speed? It's a huge voice ranking factor. Page speed appears to play a major role in voice search SEO. You know, the average voice search result page loads in 4.6 seconds. I mean, we're going to smash that with the website speed we've got. And if you've got the questions right, your website will come up. So, you know, just take that, take this bit seriously, try and get all the, you know, the questions I'm gonna give you to your niche. If we have a look at, I've opened up the ones I did. This is my plumbing website in Southport. The FAQs I did for that was plumbers near me. That would be restaurants near me. Um, you know, whatever your niche, niche is. And then I put in the town plumbers. Plumbers near me are cheap. All these came back from this piece of software I've got, Voice Rank. I'm going to do as many niches as I can and put them in. I did uh, attorneys in San Francisco. This could be whichever town you're in. Just change these attorneys in, blah, blah. And if you're looking for... The answer would be if you're looking for an attorney in San Diego or you know put the name in contact us straight away we offer you know great service but i'm going to put all these in best attorneys divorce attorneys employment attorneys you know these are everything obviously if it was in the uk i'd be using the word solicitor but i've done you know for most niches i'm going to try to anyhow but on my plumbing one this is what i put in emergency plumbers how much does a, a a boiler cost to replace. These were questions that people were asking. Do old boilers use more gas? Y you know, my answer would be, given the answer, if we have a look at what I did on the roofing one for Paul, roofers near me. Who does roofing near me? These all came up, licensed and insured roofers. Best affordable, recommended, emergency. slightly different on my spray tanning one yeah i used a different one you know people are looking for the cost how much does a spray tan cost that's why i put that in call us today to discuss your requirements to put the price in how long does a spray tan take these were questions people were asking 15 minutes spray tanning shops near me 
obviously I can't cover every niche. This is the beauty one that I did. How far in advance to book a beauty therapist for a wedding? Good question. And I just put in the more notice you can give a beauty therapist, the better. Visit our contact page to book with us. That's the type of answer that I give. I'm going to try and give you as many and you just convert them. I think, um, you know, this one I found, what are beauty therapists called? I couldn't believe someone had asked that. So I put in the magicians. <laughs> and I, I just try and be a bit humor, you know, but I do put in, what do beauty salons charge? That depends on the treatment. But these are all questions. I'm going to try and put as many in. I have, let's have a look, what's this one? I did electricians, so electrical contractors. Um, wherever your town is, these were the main ones. And also it'd be electricians near me. Always comes up that near me. I'm not sure why, but it does. Barbers, I did barbers. And that'd be barbers near me. Yeah, whatever, cheap barbers in town. What's this one? Restaurants, I did this, yeah. How many Michelin star restaurants in? And put your town in, it's a question being asked. How many restaurants in? If, it, if someone said how much, um, I don't know, I think it was the roofing one. They were asking like silly questions. And some, you've just got to work out sushi and restaurant, blah, what are the best restaurants, what restaurants are. And you always refer back to us, you know, contact us, the phone numbers on the website. Try and give a, a good answer. So for me doing this one, it's going to be pretty simple because I already have my roofing ones. I know which ones. Roof is near me. And, I'm, you know, I'll put my answer in. Who does roofing near me? Licensed and insured. These are what I'm going to put in and answer the questions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And never really do more than ten, to be honest. I suppose if you really want to get into it and you can think of more phrases, search phrases. But voice is different than text. Remember that. Voice search. And whenever you answer, um, Google does a recommendation of 29 words. So that's what you need to do. 29 words. So if I take this first one, because this is what I'm going to work off. Just close these down. But I will put as many in. If I go back here now, FAQ, edit with Elementor. Click on the uh, question, click on it there. And, and because they are questions, don't forget the question mark. Roof is near me, so this is in Los Angeles. So I put the guy's name in. What did I call him? Um, Jones, but I'll put it in. Um, Jones Plumbing is situated. Don't forget, I'm doing this live. I'm going to stop. I'll just pause this so I can put the answer in. Okay, so I'll put that in now. Roofers near me, P. Jones Roofers in Los Angeles, CA, have been serving a blah, 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 as you can read there. Answers the question. I don't think it's more than 29 words. Is there one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven? And yeah, I'll work it out, but I wouldn't go any further than that. Normally, I would be less. Uh, but that's it. And I also, when I put that in and update it, go to style in the center. Content, colour, and change the text colour. I did it again, 1C, 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 and I updated that. And then they would click on that, and that will cover that. So then I go to my next question. Try and put 10 in. What I am going to do is take that out, move that up a bit. Most frequently asked questions. I'm going to go to style, text color, and I'm actually going to put in the orange. I'll 
Okay. Typography 15. I'm going to make that 25. Let's go 20. Okay. And I'm going to update. Basically, what I did was deleted the other. Clicked on that. Most frequently asked questions. Went to style. Changed the text color. And updated it. Okay, so from the list that I've given you, or try and come up with them, but this one will always come up. Beauty salons near me at anything. Most of these. Well, if you're a roofer, just copy these. Recommended roofers will always come up. Right, so I'm going to carry on putting these in now. You look through the list, see if you can find yours um, and just put 10 in. Minimum 10. 29 words for the answer. Okay, see you in a minute, guys. Right, okay, guys, I've put all mine in. Um, if Just to show you, if you did want to add more items, you just click that button there, add item start with toggle title that'll put your question in and then you put your answer okay anyway i'm going to move that because i don't need it what i did do i went back through these questions and i threw in if you remember the local towns this list i added those so roof is near me just put that one when I started answering the questions, that's when I put in service in which areas. Try and get those in. I didn't put them in every one. And in some I even mixed them up. I left some out. I can only put half of them in there. Or down to the bottom, I think I did Rufus' name. In, in, in the last one, yeah, I just put them in. Oops, I've not answered that one. So I didn't do so well there. Yeah, I meant to copy that out and put it in. So I'll do that last question there. What I might want to do, because it looks a bit bland if I go to what's online, it looks a bit bland. So I'll go back to it. This is entirely up to you guys. What I did do, like this was on 32. Get up there. Okay, went to style. I dropped mine to 13. I brought the questions up closer together. Actually, I quite like that on five. Border color, I was happy with that. Box shadow, um, click on there and just put default. I quite like that effect. quite like that actually I'm going to update that and see what it looks like let's not get too hung up on it guys it's all about have I ended too many put too many questions in there I'll go back to that and see what's happened or well, it's repeated me questions yeah so looking at that I quite like that what happened here guys I went back to it for some reason I'm not sure why it had duplicated this so if you do get that, there was a little box, just right click on it and delete. Obviously not them, but it was underneath. For some reason it had duplicated everything and I just clicked on it and deleted it. So if I refresh that page now, this working live's not as easy as you think, guys. Seriously. <laughs> Another shock for me, my internet went off. My internet never goes off, it went off then. So we've refreshed that. So this is what I'm left with, guys. I like that. Yeah, try and get the uh, local areas in some of your answers. But that looks great to me. I'm, I'm liking that. So let's move on to the next video where I'll just go back over everything. We'll do a speed test. Hopefully you got all that guys. If you have any problems, just contact me and we'll sort it out. But it should be good. All the questions are in. I just went to style. 
I dropped the spacing between them to five. This was okay. That was okay. I went to box shadow, clicked on that and clicked default and it put that dark effect on. That was it. Okay, I'll see you in the next video. Right guys, this will be a quick video. Just more housekeeping and we'll do a speed test. What I did do, um, sorry, this one. If you remember, I used the image on here twice on my portfolio page. So I found another image, resized it, optimized it and put that in. So that's still working great. The FAQ, I can't understand why I kept saying roofers are near me, niche near me. Why that keeps coming up? Because of course I know why it comes up because it's geolocated. When you when the voice says they say uh, restaurant near me, like most of the other, you know, thirty seven percent of the fifty five year olds are bothered doing restaurant near me, hairdressers near me, whatever the niche is, is because it's geolocated. You'll be asked then by your phone, can we get your current position? They click yes and they geolocate and that's why it gives them the local businesses. I'm sorry I kept saying before, I don't know why near me, near me, but that is why. Who does roofing near me? Once it gets the geolocation of the person asking the question, that's why. And these, are, believe it, these are what they're asking. You'd think they'd say, I don't know. Emergency roofers in Los Angeles, no. Emergency roofers near me, everything else. Restaurants near me. So that clears that one up. Um, I've done my portfolio page, that image. Everything else looks great. All I want to do now, just in this video, is we've got Yoast SEO left to do. We've got a schema left to do, which is this. I'm going to show you. I've already coded it. And I will show you what changes you need to make to this. This helps Google, well, the algorithms totally pinpoint your business. I will show you all the details you've got to put in here. We're going to put that in and then we're going to test it. And then we're going to preview it to make sure the image is showing. So it looks like this. And then I'm going to show you where to add this code in your WordPress theme. So we've got that to do. Yoast SEO um, and then webmaster tools to get Google um, to index the website and that's it the website then will be launched on the internet after that it's just a, a few security things and if you can get that far you've done really good you know how to build websites I know that's saying zero but I'm gonna let's just GT metric let's try this out and see where we're up to Hopefully we haven't lost anything. Hopefully you haven't. Once again though, if you're not hitting these, it is your hosting. Let's see where we come in at. But well done if you're still with me. You know, you can build websites better than anybody after this. 1.7, great stuff. 94. You're hitting these targets still now. You, you, you know, you're in a minority of 5%. Web designers don't even know this. Top ones. And, and do whatever I've already said before. You know, whatever your town is, Google a web design company. Go to their portfolio page. Put them in this and have a look at the difference of them and you. And that's why you can make websites for anybody after this. So let's keep going, guys. Um, yeah, just the schema, Yoast SEO and Webmaster Tools. Okay, I'll see you in the next video. Right, so here we are again. Uh, like I promised in a few of the previous videos, this is the lady I used to take the white background out of any images I do. So if you see, it's, you know, they love this, business owners. You can get a small image of them. Uh, what's the other one on contact us page? No, about, yeah, they love this. But this is the lady who did it for me. She's really good. I think it cost me four pound. That's me actually, yeah. Uh, I think it cost me four pound to have it done. Yeah, four pound 13. 
I will do removals. Um, you'll have to sign up here, Fiverr.com. Sign up and just go on here, go for the basic, select that, and then just go through to and you upload the image. She's she's added back to me within two days. I think she'll actually do more than one. Remove ten images or product background. Five dollars can't beat that, and she's really good. But I've left the link uh, to this lady with all the other links, so you'll you'll see that. So if you do need to use it, this is the girl. She's really good. The only other thing I want to do, I've noticed for some reason, if we have a look at these pages, the portfolio, FAQ, contact us, the transition is great. But if we go to the about page, it jumps. So I just want to sort that out. You know, I want you to learn how to build these correctly. Don't want no little errors. It looks bad on you, that little jump. So the about page, I'm going to open that and I'll show you what the problem is. If I open, I'm going to right click on edit with Elementor and I'm going to open them in links. I'll show you because if we go to the about page, click on that, it's a title which is correct. If we go to the contact us page, when it opens, it's an image block which is wrong. So what I'm going to do is, well, just copy it from here, copy that, go to the dots at the top, put in a heading, paste, and then remove this one, delete, and then I'm going to center that, and then I'm going to update it. Let me go back to that one. Yeah, title, title, yeah. So I've updated that. So go back to the website, just refresh it. About, sorry, it's going a bit slow, it's because I'm recording. Contact us, see the transitions, right? Yeah, so that's what we need to do. So, I've already done that page. So what I'm going to do is open these others, FAQ, open, front page is okay. Um, portfolio, open a new tab, privacy policy, open a new tab, open a new tab. And we'll start at the end. But you know, it's, it's, you will make little errors. You get tired, the coding and that, it's, while I'm recording, it really is crazy. Right, let's do the FAQ, that's open. Click on that, yeah, it's the same. So take out the FAQ, copy, put in the title, paste that in, center it, and delete this one. Okay, let's update that. So that's the contact done, the FAQ done, portfolio, copy, title, probably won't even be noticeable to anyone who buys the website but you know if you're going for a job at a design company it'll be noticeable to them if you need to, you know if you're building a portfolio. And that's what they like, attention to detail. And that's what we're doing here. Center it, delete that. Update. It's that one. Terms of service. Got a funny feeling I've missed one. <clears throat> Excuse me. Center that. Delete this. Okay. It's updated. Privacy's done. 
down to OK. I'm going to shut those down. Let's have a look at the live version. Back to the home page. About. Portfolio. FAQ. Contact us. See, the transition's brilliant. That's it. The only other thing I saw here again, yeah, I need to um, privacy policy. I've just got to put that on one line. So, just open that page again. You know, if you are building a portfolio so you can get a good job, these are little things that will look at. That's a correct word, double click, I'll leave it. So I'm going to update that. Refresh. Okay, perfect. Right guys, um, next we'll do um, Yoast SEO. Hey everyone, it's Cassie from Elementor. Today we'll go over how to create a mobile responsive website with Elementor. Elementor includes five main mobile editing tools. Mobile font size, reverse columns, responsive column width, padding and margin, and hide and show elements. Follow these simple steps and you'll know how to make a 100% mobile responsive website. Sometimes headlines and text elements that look great on the desktop need to be tweaked for mobile. So this headline looks great here, but when I switch to mobile, it's just too big. Luckily, you can easily reduce the headline size on mobile by going to Style, Typography, and Reduce the Size. Under the Content tab, you also have the option to adjust the alignment. Looks great now. Note that after changing your mobile design, the changes will not be visible when you switch back to desktop mode. Each mode will reflect the specific settings you choose for each device. When you create a page with Elementor, it's automatically mobile responsive. This is achieved by stacking the columns in a vertical order. But when you view your site on mobile, the order of your columns may look different than you intended. So a two-column image and text section like this may have the text on top of the image. To fix this, use the reverse column switch. Click the section handle, go to Advanced, Responsive, and turn on Reverse Columns. Now you see the content is displayed in the right order. As we said on mobile, columns are stacked in a vertical order, but you can always customize your column layout for mobile. Look at this four column services section. On mobile, they're stacked. To avoid this, reduce the width. Click the column, enter 50%, and do the same with the other columns. Now the mobile layout shows two columns side by side. while the desktop still displays four columns side by side. Sometimes giving ample space on the desktop can result in a website being smushed together on mobile. When we go to Mobile View, you see that there's too much space between the logo and the headline. Fix this by setting the margin to zero. Here, too much padding causes the column to become too condensed on mobile. Change the padding to 30 to adjust this. One of the easiest ways to make your site more responsive is by creating two separate elements, one visible only on mobile and the other only on desktop. When I go to Button, Advanced, Responsive, I can hide the widget from the desktop devices. When I preview the page on desktop, it's hidden. 
Now I'll do the same for the other button. This time, hide it from mobile. So again, advanced, responsive, hide on mobile. When I preview the mobile page, it's gone. By the way, you can use the same method to hide sections. In this video, we've seen five tools to help you customize your website and make it 100% mobile responsive. Here's an important best practice. When you finish creating a page, always switch to mobile view and go through the sections. Use the tools you learned in this video to fix any issues you notice. I invite you to go over your site and make it responsive the easy Elementor way. And don't forget, subscribe to our YouTube channel for more tutorials. Okay, Yoast SEO. Let's take a look. If you already know what you're doing on this, guys, just do your own thing. I'm no specialist, but um, I do it my way, and it's, the site seems to rank. Just clicked on the icon there, the general features. Readability, I turned that off. Um, the cornerstone one, I turned that off. Don't mind that, we need that, we need that, I, I like that. And I turn this off. No one else is going to be adding content. So I would save those changes. Uh, Webmaster Tools, we'll come back to that one. Search Appearance. Okay. What I have done, and I'll leave it with you, these are the ones, the titles I've used for each niche, just to show you how I do it. That one's a little bit long, to be honest. Maybe I should have took the name out. But if I was selling this site like I was selling that one, that's how I got the guy's name in and I got me two search terms in that I was trying to rank for. Um, the Southport Plumbing one I haven't sold, so I've left it at that. And that's how I did the beauty one. And, you know, just have a look at the descriptions that I did. And I'll leave this for you, just so you can work from it. Okay, organisation name, I'm just going to put in. Um, oops. Los Angeles Plumbers. Organisation logo. Right, so what I will do for that one, media, right click. Open it in a new tab. Let's find the logo. We used this one, didn't we? Yeah. So what it's asking for is this link. Copy that. Yeah, that looks good. Uh, I'll go back to me Yoast and just bang that in there. Well, did it copy? Control V. No, it didn't. Right, now what it's asking me to do, if we click on Upload Image, I don't know what the difference is, but Use Image, and it puts it in that way. So just click Upload, go to where your logo is, and put that in. Save Changes. The rest of them, I'll come back to. Really, I'm only interested in the home page. Edit. At the, at the end, because we do, we're going to edit this in the back end, not with the elemental. Okay, here we go. Edit snippet. That's wrong. Okay. It'll change this anyhow. Los Angeles plumbers. I'll put it in that way. The slug. Um, the title. I'm going to delete that one, delete that one, delete that one. Los Angeles roofers and put that there. The tagline. And I'll put a spa spacer in between if I can. Like so. 
Los Angeles roofers, roofers in Los Angeles. I will come back in and probably put the guy's name, whoever I sold it to. If I just copy what I did here, put this in the meta description should be I think they say maximum 166 for some reason I've got this too long so I would mind you I haven't got the guy's name so I'll take that out I'll put in Los Angeles think yeah I'll take that out but you know this one is sitting top of page one so uh, Los Angeles roofers I'd probably put the guy's name in we offer a, a wide range of roofing contractors and roof repair services to domestic commercial and industrial but I would still try and get I would probably it's gonna go too long so I still want to get my second one in. And I'll just keep going till it makes sense. There you are, that's state green. Los Angeles Roofers, we offer a we offer our no, we offer a can you tell them I'm dyslexic? Los Angeles Roofers, we offer a wide range of roofing contractors and roof repair services to domestic, commercial. Yeah, I might change it a little bit, but that's it. And I just I try and get both my search terms in, which I have done. So I'm happy with that. Focus keyword. Let me just copy this. Copy. Focus keyword is going to be. Let's take that out. That. What that should have done now, if I just update. Go back to the front end where it says home here at the top. That's what we needed to get rid of. There you go. So our two search terms are there now for Google to pick up on. Okay, let's take a look at this. Internal links. No internal links appear on the page. Okay, we've got that sorted. If I right click, open link in new tab where what Google likes us to do is link. So if home, edit with Elementor, link to the FAQ page. So when they do crawl the site, they go, oh, they are Google, we've, we've got an FAQ page. Um, and I would probably add something somewhere towards that. Yeah, maybe in here, down at the bottom. For more information, please see our FAQ page. Okay, and what I'm going to do then, I update that, I'm going to go to the live version, FAQ page, I'm going to copy the URL at the top, come back into here. I'm going to highlight FAQ page. I'm going to link to it. Paste that in there. Apply. Then I'm going to edit it. Oops, sorry. Link options. Open link in new tab. So we stay on the front page. The front page stays open. Update. Okay. So I added the link applied the link and then edited it to open in a new page once it's once it's applied edit click on the blue one oops come on 
click on the yeah the wheel open link in new tab update right so we're linking to a page when it updates okay so I'll go back oh, I'm gonna shut. I'll go back to this update it I don't go 100% off this I just get green at the top I know my meta description's good I know my slug's good I know my SEO title's good because I've actually done things that are still red on it no, no internal links let's refresh the page you know sometimes it just you know I could see their keyword in meta description key word, key phrase in meta description well we know it's there because it's here and there it is oops sorry people I have full plumbers <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing click update so that was my fault yeah and it disappeared internal links no internal links appear on the page well I'm sorry we have done we've been no outbound links what that one means is it likes us to um, link to an authority page out out of our site so what I would do um, I would try and find an authority blog something like this that's in that area Wow, that looks a mess, doesn't it? I don't think I'll go to that one. Roofing Contractors Association. You know, you that might not come up on yours if you've got um, an outgoing link to social media or whatever. But all, all I do is find an authority blog or something in that area, go back and link out to it. So that would mean on the front page again, linking out i would probably do it somewhere down here because we don't really want people clicking on it it's just for seo and i would make sure apply it edit the wheel that it opens in a new tab update update Come on. Okay, so I'll refresh this. So it's a little update it first, then I'll refresh it. Right, okay. Excuse me, it's caught up with those outbound links now and the internal link that we've done. What it's telling me now is SEO title width, the title is too short, but I like that. I'm quite happy with it. I don't want it spread, it's got to stay as H1. I don't want it all the way across. If you want to extend yours to get the green for that, that's fair enough. Um, I did put the other keyword phrase in there roofers in the great value but what I might do if I sell the site is put the guy's name here that's what I'll probably do but this as long as I get the green dot up above there and I have took the word plumbers out I don't know what I was doing I've been flying between me two sites three sites um, so now I'm happy with that, Los Angeles Roofers, Roofers in Los Angeles, I will come in, put the guy's name in there probably, and edit the snippet, I'll put it in here. I'm happy with that, it's green. At least I put roofers there, not plumbers, and roofers there. Um, but no, I don't want to extend that, and I do not want to keyword stuff it, so I am happy knowing this is right. You know, as you saw, the length of what I had Paul Rimmers and I put in there was too long, but his hits page one. And just to show you, all the description shows. So, 
Um, it's, you know, it's telling us not to do it, but the whole description shows there. So, getting what you need to. I mean, I have it in some, uh, you know, callers today, and I've put the phone number in as well. But we're going to do a click to call button on the mobile, so I won't bother on this. On the mobile version, I'm going to show you how to do a click to call button. But now I'm happy with that, I'm going to update it. Okay. Um, I've never done it this way before, but we'll see if I can verify a site with Webmaster Tools this way. So, oh, Webmaster Tools, which is Google, Search Console. If you don't already have an account, you'll need to sign up. Okay, start now. See, I'm already in. So, if I just go back to the old version because you won't be on this, you will probably come in here. These are all my other sites. So, what we're going to do is add a property, put in the URL of our lovely website. You know, you should really, that's my, not saying yet. You did the, the They'd like you to put in the WW version as well, but I must admit, I don't bother. Um, let's have a look. Alternative methods there. Click that. Yeah. Right, so what we've got to do is copy all this. We're not going to need it all. We're going to have to alter it. Uh, but it won't let you take just a little bit we want. We'll go back to the Yoast paste that in right so where that end quote is there at the end we take that off and where the quote is at the beginning of the letters we take that off so all we've got is the middle bit save changes okay let's see if that works I'll just refresh the page Go back to Google. Let's see if that verifies the website. Normally I would download something. Yeah, it has, which is great stuff. So we'll click continue. Good, site maps. Right, so let's go back to Yoast. Yeah, I clicked on, we were on Webmaster, go to Features. And we click on the sitemap here. See the XML sitemap, read blah, blah, blah. So we click that. This is the sitemap of our website. What we need to do is copy that bit there. Copy sitemap underscore index dot XML. Go back to Google, put that in there. Submit it. Hopefully everything's okay. I have known problems. Oh, yes. And there we have the sitemap added. Success. Okay. So what we're going to do now is a URL inspection. So we will put in the website URL. We're about to get our website indexed. Paste. Press enter on the keyboard. Okay, now we have to sit back and wait, let's test live URL, sit back and wait, we've done everything, website looks great, did I need to make any changes, I think yeah, I think we're just going to go in and change the colour of this link, that's what we did to the blog, I don't really want people clicking out, so I'm going to change the colour of that. Testing live URL. So, yeah, let's go back to the home page. We saved all the changes. Let's have a look at this. What's that one? No, 
no thanks. It's the only thing we use to keep throwing these things at you. Right, if I wanted to upgrade, we'd upgrade, wouldn't we? Okay, so that's good. I'm going to go to pages. All pages. Oh, it's getting a bit long now, but we're, we're done on this video. Um, edit with Elementor. But that's the website finished, guys. Google now will crawl it. Be patient. Let's see what happens. So I want to click on this link. Actually, I want to click on the box. I think actually it's set. Let's edit. Edit. Can't really change the color of the link. Right, looks like I'm going to have to live with that. Um, no, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take that link out. I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to delete it from there. If we can. Cancel. Come on. So I'm going to take that link out. Yeah, remove link. And I'm going to update that. I'm going to put it higher on the page. I don't like that. That really stands out so much. I'll just pick somewhere. Maybe here. And that won't let us because it's an image box. Okay. Let's click on here. Uh, yeah, down at the bottom. I'll just do the one word repair. As long as it links, they're not bothered. So I'll paste that in. Apply the link. Edit. Go to wheel. Open link in new tab. Update. And then update at the bottom. Yeah, I'd rather just add it on the white. It's not as obvious. Didn't like that at the bottom. Okay, so that's that. URL inspection. Yeah, they've inspected it. URL is available on Google. What we've got to do now is just sit back and wait for Google to index it. If you want to see how quick it could be indexed or how many pages are, site colon in the top. Oh, there we go. And then you put in your URL. I think you can do it with or without. So I think it has indexed it, but not to the updated version, but it should show up here. That's how you find out. We can try it with, see if it makes any difference. Don't think so though. No, I think this is just what Google had. So I don't think it's indexed yet because yeah, actually it's not because this isn't what we wrote. We'll come back to it later on tomorrow and this is where it all happens right okay so picking up off that last video i was going to redo that video because i saw the errors that i made you know putting plumbers in i'm working on that many websites at the moment oh my brain must have been well confused but i've been back in but it's a good example of how easy it is to make excuses uh, sorry, mistakes, and I didn't, you know, I'd rather you were made aware of these, you know, even I make them, so you've just got to double check your work, but I have gone back in and straightened everything up, um, if I go to my homepage now, edit, have a look at the changes I did make, I put in the word recommended roofers in Los Angeles, and it gave me the other red one. I did extend the title. I put recommended in like that. So I don't want to do this. I don't want to keyword stuff it. I'm quite happy with the way the website looks. I've got my two search terms in there at the top in the subtitle. I've got them in here. I've got the secondary one in here. I don't want it in too much. So I'm not going to go along with that because I just don't have enough content. So I'll update that. Uh, another thing as well, if you've actually been working on this, 
and then you go and do a speed test and your site's gone white click on edit elementor i'm not sure when you're working in the back end of uh, wordpress all of a sudden your site elementor gets mixed up your site might show up white so what i do is just go on the title make a little alteration pull that back click update and your website should be back up and running I don't know, I think it's Elementor showing that it's an authority or liking to. So anyway, um, if I go back to Yoast, other, other things I did notice, when we put the sitemap in to the console, I clicked on it, we've got author sitemap, and we've got post, I think it was. We don't want that. So the only other changes I made, I went to search appearance. The only, the only sitemap we want in is um, pages. So I went to this, posts, I clicked them all off, go down to the bottom, save changes. Okay. Media, yeah, we'll leave that one on. Categories, I'll put that on a no as well. <clears throat> Don't want to sign up the categories, save changes. Um, yeah, that was that one. Let's have a look at this. I disable this author archive settings and that was it so now if I actually go and have a look at the site map actually well, that's not the one is it the general yeah features if I look at the site map now click on that we've got this before I actually put that site map back in another little thing I saw if I go to the live website about we have this about hyphen two that's because when we installed WordPress that did an about page but when we installed this theme it also did an about page so what we've got to do is just go back in to all pages and just change that permalink Go to about, edit. URL slug on the right. Take out the minus two. Click update. Update. And then we should be good to go. Those are all the changes. I'm not sure if Webmaster Tools will pull that through. I might just if I have a look at the sitemap now again. Okay, and then we click on it. There we are. All the permalinks are correct. So that's great. So I'll just go back one step. Copy. I think I will go into sitemaps and just re-enter it again it might have pulled it through but i'd rather just put it in okay yeah so it's pulled it through so i'm going to leave it at that see what happens what i also did do again um after i've done that url inspection I put it in and I got Google to index the website again. Request indexing like we normally do and let I've already done it. So um, you do that again. Any changes you've made. So I'm thinking now if we go to sites colon, let's have a look. Yeah, it's indexed the website now. It's made the changes we put on it. Yeah, looks good. I'm happy with that. But I will put the guy's name in, extend that a little bit. So we've, yeah, we've redone the side map, which is good. Um, everything's good here. I think now I'll just delete the cache and we'll give it a quick speed test. GT metrics. Because we've just made those changes, it might 
come back a little bit slow just check that permalink on the about yeah great stuff refresh the website I have known them come back with a slow reading when you've just cleared the cache so don't worry about it if it does I think I've already shown that in one of the other videos but yeah it's so simple if you you know making plenty of websites but I'd rather show the mistakes I made than try and cover them up let's refresh that one again give her another go see and we're still looking great 93 for mobile Point six, though. Yeah, that's great. So in the next video, I'm just going to do the schema, um, and we're nearly there. Okay, guys. See you in the next video. Right. Okay. Let's add the schema to the website. Google loves these. It's for voice search. Helps Google totally pinpoint the location of your business. So what I've actually done. I googled um, empty premises in Los Angeles downtown, you know, city centre, and I came up with a, an office that was up for rent. So that is the address I'm going to use on my schema. This is the address I got. I have actually known guys because when, when I do my websites for anywhere else, I always try and find an em empty lockup or a vacant property that's in the city centre. Um, and I never change it. Even when I sell the website, I leave it to that. Obviously, um, you'll need to put a phone number in because this phone number came up with that vacant property, but I just changed it. But basically, this is what we want Google just to know, or we're not fooling them. We're just sort of saying, hey, this is where we are, right in the center of Los Angeles, so rank us high. Yeah, so that's what I did. Um, I'm going to give you the link to this page. It can tell you, read all about it. It's important, you know, different types of schema. This is the one we're doing, like a local business one. But whatever your niche is, you come under the main title. So this is what you would put in. Where I mine comes under, because I'm doing roofing, it comes under home and construction business that is the title I have to use so you would go down obviously childcare is on its own dentist is but emergency service will cover these and just find your niche whoever you're building the website for and put the main one in these are like subcategories that come off it okay so like obviously for me beauty salon one I use this no spaces as it says there this is the one I've used on this schema because it's a roof and contractors website. So you find your title for which niche you're in. You'll find this link with the other um, links. So type will be whatever your niche is. Name. Well, obviously I couldn't put the guy's name in yet, but I've just put Los Angeles roofers. And I think I'm going to add CA to that, to be honest. And then the URL of your website. Leave, you know, try not to move any of these quotes. Be very careful what you're doing. I've already coded it for you. Just fill in the spaces. And then you come down to the next one, which is logo. Obviously, I've got this long URL here because uh, GT Metrics gave me, you know, smushed the image even further for me. So that's why I've got that. So I will just go back into my website, media library, click on the logo, copy this link. That's what I did do. You will copy that, come back to the schema and put your logo in between the quotes. There. As I haven't got what's well, same as, I mean, normally if I did a Facebook page for the business, I would put that in plus whatever it was like on Paul Rimmer's roofer it was Paul underscore Rimmer's for his Facebook page but I'm going to try and get away with just that because I don't have one right now contact points telephone 
from that point. Yeah, telephone. This was the number that, well, it's not the number, but similar number that came back with that empty property. So it did that. But yeah, like I said, I've, I have known guys who mainly will try and uh, locate a, a burger bar or McDonald's in the town centre and use that address in the schema. These are the details, street address, which was really strange to me that, but that was a street address, the uh, locality, the region, and the postal code. So you would put all these in for your area or wherever you're trying to rank the website. It was then asking for another image here. So once again, I just went into the library and I think it was this one. I took that. It's a small image, so I thought, yeah, I'll use that. So that was that um, email address. I just put in info at losangelesrufus.com because I don't have an email address right now. But as long as you put one in. Telephone, same thing. Opening hours, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I mean, I'd leave that anyway. Even if they're not open, I'd leave it. You know, just let Google. It, you know, it doesn't really... This this is more for just placing your website in exact location where you want to rank. So then we need to get the latitude. Latitude, sorry. So I think I just did uh, geolocations. Can't spell for Los Angeles. I always like Google giving the correct one. Oh, there we go, it was okay. So then I would just click on one of these and it'll give you the coordinates. That looks slightly different. Oh no, it's the same. Sorry, I thought that was a bit different there. So there you go. It's a slightly different, isn't it? Let's just try that one again with another map and lance. So let's have a look at this. Yeah, that's the one I went off. Yeah. So you want the latitude and the longitude and put them in there. Just be very careful with this, guys. Try not to move any of the quotes, you know, but believe me, I've saved you a lot of work here. And this works like gangbusters, it's really good. So just go through it slowly, and then we'll copy it, go to Google's testing tool, which I'll leave you a link to as well. Uh, schema tester Google, structured data testing tool, this is the one. Click on that. We're going to code snippet, put the code in, and we're going to run the test. Great stuff. Okay, so I've got no errors. Zero errors, zero warnings. If you have got any er errors, you've more than likely taken out one of these double quotes. That's what I'm saying about just doing it very carefully. You could actually put it in here, to be honest, because it does seem to highlight it a lot better, doesn't it? what you need to change just starting the with your niche category and going down slowly and get it right okay then we'll copy that fantastic shut that down go to appearance on the left theme editor at the bottom and um, you will get a warning mind you I haven't because I'm always in there doing extra bit of code so you'll get a warning there just click on there yes I understand over on the right head of PHP and this is where we're going to put it and I'm going to overplace this because I've already done it so I would let me take this out to be honest and I'll show you exactly where we need to put this. Let me just get this right. Script application here. 
there. So if I take this out and put it back in again to there. Right, what we're actually looking for guys is this bottom tag head. We have the opening tag there, the opening head section where this coat goes. Then we have the closing tag, the one with the lining. So we want to be just above that. I'd actually push it down a bit. Go to line 25, paste in your code, like so. I could probably drop that down. <clears throat> Make sure guys you've got the opening and closing brackets there. Okay, pull this up a bit. Yeah, and then click update file. Hopefully you get the file updated. File edited successfully. And that's brilliant. And then tomorrow, once again, I would go back to uh, Webmaster Tools and get Google to crawl the website again so it picks up this new information. You can do it so many times a month. Uh, keep getting them to index your website, crawl it again, pick up the new information. So that's that one, guys. So be careful. Yeah, so if you actually go to the structured tool, the link I give you, the, the this one that I'm going to put in the folder with all the others, copy and paste this in to the data testing tool. And it does look easier to be able to alter it here. But double check everything. Don't forget any errors because there are no errors on this. You know, but you'll always have this. If you can't work it out, just copy and paste this again, put it in again, and then start afresh. Okay, well done. I'll see you in the next video.